Welcome back to Nighthawk Films, everyone. My name is Ian Allen, and today we are going to be reacting to the new Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania trailer. This trailer dropped tonight. Uh, I think it was it was it was originally dropping at the there was some college football game where there was a football game going on tonight, and the trailer dropped during uh, the commercials. And what a great way to do that because every time there's like some type of uh, sporting event going on, they always seem to add a trailer. Because it's getting closer. Because Ant-Man the Wasp, the three, will come out next month. Which is crazy to think about. If Technically, if you look at the calendar, one month from tomorrow, it will be out. Which is crazy to think about. And the second trailer is already here. So, we have Ant-Man and Wasp. Red and yellow. I would do blue or whatever Kang's uh, color would be identified as, but I'm not going to. Okay, so... so with that being said, let's begin. Also, I remember to leave the original videos link in the description below if you guys want to check this, this video out for yourself. And as you guys all know, it's a trailer. There's probably going to be a copyright claim. You guys already know the drill because there's probably going to be music in here. Um, but you know what? It's it's a trailer. That's, that's Doesn't matter. We've done trailers before. We should be good. Okay, let's begin. Okay. You're an interesting man. I forgot to turn off the captions. Scott Lang. Hello, Ant-Man. You're an Avenger. That he is. You have a daughter. But you've lost- Okay, a daughter who is clearly in- was in jail, so I guess she had to get busted out. Just a lot of time. Like me. We can help each other with that. Yeah, so I heard that um, Kang is trying to recruit Ant-Man for his dynasty or something, or he's supposed to try, he's trying to get Ant-Man to help him, because apparently Kang is trapped in the quantum realm. We don't know how he got trapped there, and apparently they're saying that he might not be the actual main villain, and that MODOK will be introduced into this movie. Yeah! Okay. Who are you? I'm the man. Who can give you the one thing you want? Ooh. What's that? Time. Okay, okay. Interesting. It can rewrite existence and shatter timelines. You cannot trust him. I don't care who this guy is, I just lost so much. Because this is all post blip and everything, so he wants time back with his daughter that he lost. He can give us a second chance. February 17th. Whoa. Let me make this easy for you. You will bring me what I need. Or everything you call a life will end. Witness the beginning. Yeah, because this is supposed to be like Kang's homecoming to the MCU. Of a new dynasty. This is all my fault. What? You may not want her to watch this. We had a deal. Yep. And Kang went back. Oh, there he is! You thought you could win. Ooh. I don't have to win. We both just have to lose. I'm sorry, Cassie. <laughs> yeah! Oh my god. Oh, man! I... I have no words! Okay, so clearly MODOK is here. So, it looks like there's gonna be more to this. I heard that the theory for this character is that... MODOK is actually the guy who played Yellow Jacket, uh, Darren Cross, in the first Ant-Man. And when Ant-Man destroyed his suit and sent him to the quantum realm, his suit like merged with his body and turned him into MODOK. 
that's what I think the theory is of how they're going to present him, which I guess could kind of make sense. In some ways, yes and no, but I don't, I don't know. Oh my god. Like, Kang is beating the absolute crap out of Scott. You thought you could win. Also, I gotta say, uh, Jonathan Majors, he is doing so much stuff this year. I think he has Ant-Man Quantum, Ant-Man and the Lost Quantum Mania. He has, like, Creed 3 and one other movie that he's doing. He is doing a lot of stuff this year. Oh my god, he breaks his helmet and everything. I don't have to win. Oh. We both just have to lose. Why do they both have to lose? That's another question. I think the que like, there was something saying that if, like, Kang is stuck in the quantum realm. And he uses Team Ant-Man to try and get him out. And unfortunately, I think apparently Kang must double cross Scott and uh, doesn't do what they're supposed to do. And Kang goes back on his word and tries to kill Ant-Man. I think in the process, this is how Modok escapes and creates AIM. Well, another version of it, because apparently a version of AIM already exists in the MCU from Ultra's Killian in Iron Man 3. But man... This is just incredible. I'm also just trying to think of like what, what is um, what did what what would King want? I don't know. This is just incredible. I think this is just so freaking cool. And and there's another theory that what if the the ten, the ten rings from Shang Chi are leading a beacon to Kang or. It's sending a signal to Kang. I don't know. All I gotta say is, this movie is going to be the greatest kickstart to Phase 5. And, like I said, or I've said, I don't know if I said this or not, but apparently they're going, they're, they're going from quality, no, they're going from quantity to quality. So they're going to be delaying a few other projects going forward. So, I don't think, I mean, this movie is not going to get delayed. I don't think Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is going to get delayed either because I'm pretty sure these two were both already supposed to come out last year, but they didn't due to the pandemic. So with these ones coming out now, they've technically been done for a while. They just needed to have editing done and stuff worked on. But man, I've never been this, I mean, I've been hyped for Marvel movies in the past. I was I was excited for Civil War. I was excited for Endgame and Infinity War. I was totally hyped for Spider-Man No Way Home. But I've never been this excited for another Marvel movie in a while. Because Shang-Chi was really good. Doctor Strange 2 was okay. Uh, I feel like it's a little bit underrated than it should be. But it shouldn't be overrated. I feel like it's it's in a good gray spot. But this one. Wow. Ah. I, holy crap, oh, I have got to say, this one's going to be great. This one is going to be incredible. And I think going forward into phase five, we are officially getting, this is where Kang makes his mark. Because even though a version of him in Loki made an appearance as He Who Remains, that's one of the variants who became like the one who sees over everything. And now this new, this, I guess this other original version of Kang or some other version of Kang. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. The multiverse saga is just incredible. It's. Ugh. I mean, don't get me wrong. It didn't start the greatest with phase four. I will hundred percent admit that. And when I, when, during that time, it was hard to be a Marvel fan. But now that they've shown me this, I am confident that they're going to do fairly well. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, there's tons of theories that I mentioned in this video that could be true or could not be true. I don't know if, if some of these are actually even the plot or just fake. All I got to say is this movie looks incredible. You guys should definitely go see it on February 17th of 2023. Which is, like, like I said one week away from next Tuesday or no one month away from next Tuesday. So it's coming fast and it will be here sooner than we expected. <clears throat> Actually, no, what day is the 17th? 
The 17th is a Friday of, of February. Ooh, I know what I'm doing on Friday. <laughs> okay, so with that being said, that's going to be it for today's episode of Nighthawk Reacts. Remember to share this video with your friends and family. I hope you guys have an incredible day. Rem remember to share this video with your friends and family. And I hope you guys, I've already said this. <sighs> I will see you guys in the, I, I don't know. I'm so excited. Just have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next one. And uh, stay tuned for the movie.